Hi, it's David Worrell, DIY CFO, and this is the PPP Loan Forgiveness Calculator Part 3. We are going to talk about the full-time equivalent calculation, FTE calculation, that's required for the PPP Loan Forgiveness. So you've already, uh, you know the three questions that we have to ask. Four, sorry, the four questions. We've already calculated the qualifying expenses, both payroll and non-payroll expenses. Remember the 75-25 rule? We did that in part two. And now we're going to talk about the FTEs. So the question here is, are you employing enough people? And to know the answer to that, we've got to calculate how many full-time equivalent employees you have. That's not the same thing as going around and counting noses or paychecks. That says... How many people would I employ if everyone worked 30 hours per week? Okay, that's it's just as simple as that. A full-time equivalent employee works 30 hours. Let's get going with that. There's a there's a calculator built in here that with some examples. So let's talk about these examples real quick here. Suzanne, she already works 30 hours a week. So guess what? She's one full-time employee. David, that's me, a little bit lazier. I get up kind of late. I only work 18 hours a week. I am 0.6 FTEs, right? 30 divided, I'm sorry, 18 divided by 30 is 0.6. So I am only a little more than half of a full-time equivalent. Patrick, he takes four days a week off. He's 0.333. And Steve works a half a day a week. He's 0.1333. So in each case, you divide the number by 30 to get the FTE equivalent. Now, Somebody's going to ask me, well, does that mean that a 40-hour-a-week person is 1.3 FTEs? No. <laughs> Sorry. If you're uh, like the rest of us wage slaves and you're working for 40 hours a week, you are still just one person. You're one full-time equivalent. You could work 60 hours a week, make overtime, do whatever you want. You're still one full-time equivalent person. Okay? Very good. So you uh, list your employees down the left side of this. You enter the number of hours from their base period. That's the period that you use to apply for the loan. Uh, it may be adjusted by the SBA or by your bank in the final analysis, but right now we believe that the base period will be the same period you use to apply for the loan, which means uh, either calendar 2019 or the, tr tr the trailing 12 months uh, prior to your loan application. Or for a seasonal or brand new business, you may have selected one of the other options. We'll get to those. In any event, you put in the number of hours that each employee, each named employee worked in the prior period that you used to apply, and then put them in for the PPP period. Now remember, this is just eight weeks, so you've really just got to uh, find the average here, the average hours per week, and put that in here. We'll do the math for you. We'll tell you whether you're over or under. In this case, the guy's got 10 employees. He used to have 7.7 .7 employees, now he's got 6.4. But you want to bring back all of these employees, 7.7 .7 in this case. So play around with it right now. What if you took employee number five and you made that person a full-time employee? Would that be enough? Not quite. How about if you did the same for employees three, four, five, right? If you start making everybody full-time, wow, you've actually got to do that for one, two, three, four five different employees before you get your company back to the equivalent of the 7.7 .7 FTEs. So this is a good place to play with those strategies and see how many people you need to give work to and how many hours they each need during the eight-week period. Okay, it's just that easy. Uh, it's calculated for you, and this number will roll up into our next section. So join me for part number four of this quick tutorial. Thanks.